Well, this is our 16th year, and the film festival is made up of films, obviously, uh, including shorts and features, a variety of genres, but also workshops and panels, a kid film festival, and parties. This year we have a film female filmmaker forum, a script writing competition um, that we're doing a table read for, and then we also have a workshop about screenwriting or writing in general. And then we also have one called My First Film is Zia Anger, and she's actually gonna break down the first film she ever made and why it failed. And it's really inspiring for anyone who's being creative to see it's okay to go through the process. We also have a couple that are involved with the film. Um, there's called Film School Confidential, and that's tied to the Ole Miss Film and Theater Department. And then we also have one with Body and Soul, which is a film, there'll be a discussion afterwards. It takes about a year-long process of raising funds, um, looking through film submissions. We have about 15 to 1600 film submissions that we consider before we get down to our final 200 or so. Um, we have to recruit volunteers, we have to plan locations and venues, and there's just a lot of detail work that goes into a festival. We are what's considered a top 50 film festival by Movie Maker Magazine, and we're a very solid regional film festival. And what that means is that there are good film festivals in each region of the um, country that are about our size. But there are also then, of course, the Sundances and the Toronto film festivals, which are just 2,000 times what our festival is. It's just huge. Um, so we are, are a pretty good average size festival. The first year I attended only, I was just uh, there to watch movies and there were just a handful of people in the audience and there may be 50 to 100 people that attended. Now we have a little over 10,000 that attend, so we've grown rapidly over 16 years. Overall, I think a lot of people have noticed the growth of the festival and how the programming has greatly improved over the past few years as we've been able to have full-time positions, some more staff positions, and we've just become very organized. And I think we focus still on hospitality and both locals and out-of-towners are able to experience it. Oxford's such a great place to make any kind of art, but also now that we have a film major at Ole Miss, I've really seen the film industry grow in our area. So I also represent the Mississippi Film Alliance, which is statewide, and we continue to try and encourage more filmmaking throughout the entire state. My goal is to continue growing in the direction we're growing, continue bringing great films to Oxford, but also to keep letting people from all over the world celebrate Oxford, Mississippi, instead of what they see on a movie about Mississippi, actually experience it for real and, and fall in love with it like I have. So I'm at the Oxford Film Festival. We're at the opening night, uh, sort of red carpet extravaganza. So it's a kickoff with Thacker Mountain Radio. Um, I'm here because I, I, every year I volunteer, but uh, this year I have three music videos playing in the music video block. Um, and uh, then the screening of Ghost Light later, so I'm, I'm super excited. Oh my goodness, well, like, just the people that run the festival, there's a society called Oxfilm, but I couldn't do what I do without them, um, and what they offer to local filmmakers. Um, you know, uh, the Arts Council has been so good to me over the years, kind of uh, trusting me and uh, giving me a shot, so um, it's all tied in together. These are all, you know, um, the same, really, like, 10 or 12 people that, that make this happen every year, and that really uh, trying to cultivate film up in Mississippi. And this is actually my third time at Oxford. Um, my first time as a programmer. Last year I had a short here and the previous year my feature Gold Star played here. So it's like returning back to Oxford, really excited to uh, see everyone I know and yeah, three years in a row. I keep saying to everyone, I'm like, if Melanie tells me, hey, you want to come back, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in for more. First Oxford Film Festival, yes indeed. First time in Oxford. So I've been to a lot of other festivals. Especially regionally. So that guy was just in Memphis at Indie Memphis. And then I've been in New Orleans a lot and a lot of the other festivals. But everybody's always told me Oxford's like the spot to be. And it's a very warm and friendly place to screen. And the audiences watch different types of films than some of the other festivals. So I was excited to get a chance to come here. And it was also the place with so much history that I really wanted to come. <laughs> you know? Even just as a tourist, I was excited about just being in the city. Uh, I think I would. I love showing work here. I've come back to this festival specifically a, a few times, um, and I think it's it is its own magical entity. Uh, the audiences here are really good. The conversations here are really good. The festival does a great job of community building between artists, also, which is really nice. Um, 
And I think that's great. I think that's enough. I'm actually really excited to see a lot of stories. I love seeing short films and like curated short film segments to see where the flow is. I like to learn a lot of stories. Um, and I honestly am excited to go bowling tonight. I'm excited to meet everyone. I'm excited to play and have a good time uh, and see the city. I think that's what I'm most excited about. At this point in life, I don't, other than like like drinking, and I'm kidding, I don't drink that much. But, um, you know, just seeing other filmmakers, like other people creating things, not necessarily to become rich and famous, but just because they love making stuff and sharing their art with each other and showing creative, um, all the work it takes to be a creative person. Being able to celebrate that together it really excites me and it really rejuvenates you, I think, to be just surrounded by other people who are wanting to share their perspectives and their stories with you. And I just saw the experimental block this, uh, today and it's really nice just to see different kinds of films that you may not see on like a Netflix stream, you know? Just in the shuttle over from the airport we were talking about was the importance of sharing different stories that maybe not, don't get the Hollywood platform. And so that film festivals are an opportunity for those voices to be lifted up. Um, things that maybe aren't so mainstream or aren't so commercial or maybe just you know, have, haven't had the light sh shown on it yet. So um, it's really exciting to see the work of, of people who are telling new stories from new perspectives. I uh, produced a film called Jewels of Light and Dark, which is in the uh, narrative queer competition. And then I also co-directed a short experimental piece called I Taste Blood that just screened a couple hours ago. I think any chance that I have to bring experimental or queer work to the South is a really treasured experience for me. Um, and it's something that's really important uh, down here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope it's just a, a community building piece. It has been always for me in the past to meet other people, to have conversations, have really important conversations. Uh, and I hope the work continues to do that. Here with my sub Chuck Linville. Um, documentary shorts about him. He's kind of an uh, artist provocateur from Portland, Oregon. I've known him for a long time. He's a maker of art cars and all sorts of things that comment on society, religion, you name it. So he's just a, he's an interesting human being and so we made a movie about him. Well, it's been great. I mean, like, this is our first time in Mississippi, and the, the hospitality has been fantastic. And, uh, you know, just coming to a place that you've never been to before, and then coming here and showing your film on top of it is kind of like a cool thing. It's very, it's been very enjoyable so far. Looking forward to the camaraderie with the filmmakers and uh, getting to know Oxford a little better. I wrote and directed a short film called Sell Your Body, which is a millennial horror story about student debt, dating apps, and a threesome gone wrong. So Sell Your Body is actually my thesis film. I went to the directing program at School of Visual Arts in New York, SVA, and this is the film that I made to graduate. We produced uh, a passion project this past year, a documentary about a man named Hulk Collier and uh, we're showing that 15 minute film in this film festival. It's the story of the teddy bear, yeah. of where the teddy bear came from. So it's a very, it's a very uh, relatable story to most people. Most people have owned a teddy bear. And so um, the story's gotten a lot of traction because of that. Um, it's about the guide who took President Theodore Roosevelt on the infamous teddy bear hunt. We're also here presenting a film that I directed and wrote called Funeral. And it's a film that is about a woman mourning the loss of her husband, which sounds depressing, and sometimes that is, but it's also a comedy. He stars in it, kind of. My whole spiel with this whole short film is that in the LGBTQ community, it's very difficult to find love and hold on to it um, and to lose it. Because you can say that about anybody in any kind of relationship, but right now in, in time and society, uh, we feel like we're very marginalized and there's few of us, even though I think there's a lot more than people are, 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 are saying. Or, you know, so when you lose love, it kind of becomes this thing where you think your life's over because you don't know what to do, you don't know if you're going to find someone else, you don't know if, it's, it's, if you're going to connect, you just, you just don't know. Like, we live in a time where we don't know if you're gay or, or lesbian or queer or, or bisexual or trans. And this film is, is supposed to help show you that it's okay to lose love, it's okay to move on, and it's okay to love yourself. And it's really hard. I hope to connect to some people as in the story. I hope the story resonates, I hope the story can connect to people, and I'm just hoping for that. I'm here with two films, Shoto and Samari. 
They're under a program called Stories Found. And Stories Found seeks to empower filmmakers from different cities around the world. And Stories Found, I guess, part one was in Nairobi, Kenya. So both of these films were created with emerging filmmakers within the city. Uh, both focus heavily on very cultural components of Nairobi. Uh, one focuses on the Matatu culture, which is the bus culture in, in uh, Nairobi. And that uh, follows the a day in the life of a bus driver there whose bus is covered in graffiti, plays really loud music, has amazing uh, TVs and sound systems on it. And the idea is that the better your bus is, the more people you'll attract and the more money you can make. So that's called Shoto. And then the other is Zumari, which follows a young musician who uh, has, a pretty, has had a pretty rough life, but has overcome the obstacles and is a really great flautist player. This is the most community-oriented film festival that I've ever been to. I have never met so many locals at a film festival before, and you know, uh, it you know, when you're invited to the film festival, they give you tours around the city and to the places nearby. I have never been to a film festival that offers so much introduction to the place it takes place in. So what I'm already loving so much is the community and the warmth is just really so obvious that everyone's so lovely and so um, hospitable and so um, in just a matter of a few hours just feeling all that. I go to festivals uh, all the time in fact uh, beyond being in Leah's film I'm also on the narrative features Jerry here at Oxford. Uh, I was at Sundance last week I go to festivals all the time and one of the things that brought me back here to Oxford uh, there's just a certain there's a certain local flavor to it that uh, you can, you're not going to be able to find at another festival. Uh, sometimes bigger festivals end up end up being so market oriented, and it's more about the uh, the the sale of the film and what's going to happen next. And a festival like this is really more about the art and the artists, and uh, and especially celebrating uh, you know filmmakers from the region, which I love. I think Oxford has attracts filmmakers that are a little more collaborative than other filmmakers. Because um, you just meet so many different people here, and it's not like you're going just to have an Instagram feed, you know? Like you're going because you really generally want to connect with other filmmakers. I mean, everyone here is amazing, uh, the passion for film, and yeah, it really becomes like a family at the at the end of the, at the weekend. Everyone gets to know each other and uh, has that common passion of cinema, so it's, it's a really great time. Definitely meeting uh, filmmakers, local, uh, and from all over the world because I know that a lot of people want to come here because it's kind of known as like a hip film festival to come to. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I kind of wanted to know more about Mississippi and, you know, filming here. What are the incentives? What are the benefits? Maybe I'll come back and shoot a film here one day. I think the best thing is just just being able to meet new people that you wouldn't ordinarily get to. Uh, you know, when you're on the when you're on the festival circuit, you, you tend to be part of this, this kind of, uh, you know, gypsy circus for lack of a better phrase, uh, where you're all kind of in it together and maybe you don't live in the same city, but you come here and you hang out, you meet new people and it just accumulates in this big social snowball of love. The very first time that I came to this festival years ago, um, they like threw us all on a bus together and took us on a field trip. Uh, and it was wonderful, it was so good. That's not something that happens at a whole lot of film festivals. Maybe you have a lunch together or a dinner together. You don't get the same sort of family feeling, in your words, right, as uh, at other places. So it's definitely something that this festival really seems to pride itself on, and it's a unique and great experience.